We're going to find the electric field of a point charge using Gauss's law. Let's start with a diagram. Here you can see the point charge with the electric field going out in the A hat R direction. We had covered this in the Coulomb's Law lecture videos, so if you haven't seen those videos or you haven't understood what this is yet, I'd recommend that you watch those videos. The next thing we need to do is to pick an appropriate Gaussian surface. One that's symmetric with this charge works best. And intuitively, the one you'd want to pick is the one that's symmetrical with this, which would be a sphere. Let's see what that looks like. Here I've just picked a sphere. You can see it's drawn in the x, y, z axis. Let's see what this looks like with the charge. And here's the big picture. You can see the point charge in here with this Gaussian sphere enclosing it. And the electric field goes out radially in all directions. All we have to do now is just do some math. So we know that Q enclosed is equal to the closed loop uh, surface integral of D dotted with DS. And we know this from the intro video on Gauss's law. We also know that D is equal to epsilon naught times D. So using these two expressions, we get this expression over here. It's the one in the black box. And we also know that the electric field goes out radially in all directions, and that's just some magnitude. Also, we know that the Q enclosed is just the charge of a point charge. We can just represent that with Q. So the only thing we're missing right now is ds. Let's solve that geometrically using calculus. I'm using spherical coordinates here because that's the easiest one to use in this situation. There's a few things to note, however. The surface patch element, ds, which is just a little bit of surface on the sphere, has to go in the a hat r direction. It's a vector. And the dot product of E and DS has to give us only a magnitude. And we know that from the earlier equations. So how I'm going to solve this question to make it clear is to do it right from first principles. No memorization. We're going to slice this sphere into tinier and tinier bits until we can really see what that ds element is. Here's the first slice that I've taken and here I've made an even smaller chunk on the inside of that slice. Now all of these parts over here, this r d theta, uh, the dr, r sin theta, d phi, this should be review from your uh, 200 level math course. You can find these with geometry. If you have trouble finding what these pieces are, I'd highly recommend um, reviewing your notes from those classes and a few online resources. I'll put a few links in the description that you might find helpful. Now, from what I've discussed earlier, this is the surface patch that we're interested in. It's the outer surface patch with the a hat r vector normal to it. That's the surface patch that we'd be dotting with E. And that's how Gauss's law is so beautiful in that when you pick a symmetrical Gaussian surface, that dot product basically goes away because your electric field and your symmetrical surface, uh, the surface patch element, is along the same line. So you can very easily find the magnitude of what E is. I'm going to try and make this more clear by blowing up this smaller chunk that I've taken out over here. Here you can see that's just, I've just pulled out this chunk from here and blown it up over here. here you can see there's a dr element, there's an r d theta, and r sine theta d phi. Now if I make this chunk even smaller by cutting it into tinier and tinier pieces, I'm going to get something that looks a lot like a uh, like a prism, like a rectangular prism. And here's what that looks like. And that's how we applied calculus to that sphere. We've just cut it up into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until we got this, this element over here. And the ds element that we're interested in is this one over here. 
r d theta multiplied by r sine theta d phi, and it's uh, it has this a hat r direction normal to it. Now we found all the components. Let's just plug it into the Gauss's law equation. Here I've just applied Gauss's law to the earlier equation. We have e going in the a hat r direction, and our d s element also going in the a hat r direction. So we're just left with the magnitude because these two vectors are going along the same line. And this is a very simple integral to solve. And there we go. That is the electric field for a point charge. That's the magnitude. And of course, Q enclosed is simply Q for a point charge. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.